is in negatives on both sides. It's up to the trainers to use their mastery to play around them. Let's see the opener. It's going to be Raging Bolton center or for Emma, and it's going to be Rotom and Gothitel for Rishi. Uh, immediately, we're seeing the Incineroar here with the parting shot available, I'm sure. I'm not sure if you are blocked from switching with, uh, like, switching moves with Shadow Tag. So that's definitely something to consider here. We're going to have the... Into the Raging Bolt. I feel like this is just a solid lead all around. It's pretty bulky, especially if it's running the conventional Assault Vest, which it is. So it should be able to withstand basically anything that these Pokemon have to throw out. This is a very good, I feel like especially on game one, this is a very good lead. Gets information, and you still have potential to, to run away with the game if you play everything properly here. Gothitelle's going to lead with the Protect. Makeout's going to go into the Gothitelle, of course, and that's going to get blocked. And now it's just the Raging Bolt and Heat Grind we have to worry about. But. Thunderbolt onto the Incineroar. Wow! Oh, right. Paralysis dude? No, just gonna be huge damage. Full switch gonna get Wow! That crit yeah. really mattered. But I think the one thing that Rishi does have to worry about here is if you do set up Sun, that Raging Bolt only gets stronger. So you have to really be careful about positioning around Raging Bolt. You don't, Raging Bolt's already a, a very offensive threat. You don't want it to get even more powerful than it already is. Exactly, but that Raging Bolt can't really strike this Rotom with any effectiveness because of the electric type. And got to tell, it's going to be effective, but still, this is a great opener for Rishi, and there's no switches for Emma here. I feel like this knockoff onto the Gothitelle might knock out. I'm not exactly sure, but now I think about it again, Gothitelle is not specially defensive, it's more so physically defensive, which, uh, yeah, that's very good. It might not get knocked up by the knockoff, so it's not even really something you have to worry about if you're Rishi, but there's still so many things you have to consider on both of these sides. That's exactly why we're going to see the Gothitelle switch off after protecting turn one and sending out the Rillaboom instead. You probably wouldn't be doing any fire moves to that slot, so this Rillaboom is pretty comfortable here. And uh, now we got the Grassy Surge up too to help recover anything that might have gone through. Rotom is going to get knocked off. Uh, the Citrus Berry, unfortunate, would have definitely eaten that up, but Bolt Switch is going to come on. Incineroar lives on four. Another range survival here today. Or maybe it's not a range. I feel like it might have been, but actually could be just an sure. EV spread as well. That's uncommon. Yeah, this Incineroar exactly. is very it's tanky. Guaranteed to live there. The one thing, again, the Goth Tell gets the protect, but it is going to take a big Volt Switch there. And Raging Bolt's going to go back and hide away. Problem is, now there's a lot of fake out pressure. You could eliminate this Incineroar. You could even stunt whatever is going to be thrown out here. It looks like it's going to be the Calyrex. And now things are looking relatively still good for Rishi. Yeah, but I think Emma's putting themselves in a position to get ready to win. Again, I wouldn't be shocked if you see Protect here. There is the double fake out possibilities out here, but I think Emma knows that and is prepared to play around that. Yeah, we're seeing the double fake out. Usually we see that threat on turn one, but with these two coming out off of the switch-ins and everything else, now you have to worry about that. And Cinemar, not a follow me user, so you're not going to be able to re redirect anything. Your Calyrex is definitely facing down some threats with those fake outs. So do you call it out? Do you call that they're going to play around the fact that you're probably going to protect and just go for a trick room once again? Or do you expose yourself to unnecessary damage? But it seems this time we're going to play things safe. You're going to use the protect and just hope that Rishi isn't able to come up with any clever tricks to play around that. Yeah, here's the protect going up here. Again, one downside to Rishi here is he, again, you have that grassy train, but you do not have the stomping tantrum to deal with the fire types. We will see if grassy glide goes out here. Parting shot, no, Rillaboom did not grassy glide. Rillaboom might actually be hitting into that Calyrex trying to double attack it, which may be a bad move here for Rishi. Oh, and it can't switch out of Shadow Tag. Can't switch out of Shadow Tag if it uses a switching move. So now Raging Bolt and Incineroar are going to have that movement potential. Raging Bolt going to come back out and now threaten a lot of damage here. Yeah, there's the U-turn, but that's really not going to do much to Raging Bolt. And Raging Bolt will probably heal more, will probably heal back up to full thanks to Grassy Terrain. It's very interesting matchup here today and we also have the Rotom still but I don't think you want to throw Rotom back out into this yeah, maybe you do gonna throw Rotom out. so now you have to make a call do you overheat or do you Thunderbolt I think you overheat because on the off chance that he doesn't it will just have that much more value either way and even if you do manage to get out the Amoongus for example taking an overheat would be detrimental and it would still KO the Incineroar if it comes back in as well so overheat is probably oh, just wait. option select Thunderbolt, never mind, I thought it was still fire. I think Thunderbolt would have more value because yeah, it will either do good damage or super effective damage. Yeah. The, also, the other really important thing to note on Emma's moveset compared to the last 
the last uh, oh, I see. Ice Rider we saw is we're seeing that stomping tantrum instead of seeing that uh, instead of seeing the close combat, that stopping tantrum is crucial for a cry on matchup. Exactly. We're seeing the early commit into this dark foul play, trying to take out this Calyrex as soon as possible. But I don't think it has any stat boots. No, boost no stat yes. boost, yes, on Calyrex. It'll still do a ton of damage, probably about half. Sure. So now the question is does Rotom finish it off? That is the question. It's water. If the Thunderbolt was selected, this could go the way of Rishi. Oh, play lands. Gonna do a good chunk of damage. They're not gonna to knock it out. And they get the Thunderbolt. Wow, brilliant play by Reach. It doesn't kill the Lizzo too! What? That is insane. This Calyrex Pokemon is absolutely absurd when it comes to the defense. And Rotom is actually gonna fall this turn thanks to the Draco Meteor coming out from the Raging Bolt. Glacier Lance is gonna be the retaliation, and that's gonna hit the Gothitelle pretty hard enough yeah, to knock it out, in fact. Wow. Unbelievable. Calyrex really what? just choosing today. I do not want to die. I will not fall. Nah, I'd win. The King of Bountiful Harvest is reaping the rewards right now, getting even stronger here with that chilling nay. Nay, I'd win. In fact, <laughs> that's what this Calyrex is saying every time it gets hit with a move that definitely should knock it out. We're going to see the Karidon making its debut. This game is far from over still. At the very least, you still have some options. Really move at full HP, nice, happy, and healthy. You could Grassy Glide or at least threaten it into this... Uh, this Calyrex, you got a Grass-type Pokemon facing down a Water-type. Everything's still hunky-dory for you if you're on the side of Rishi. You just have a little extra work to do. It is going to oh, be Oh, Emma's fully well. committing. Yeah. Just going for the Glacial Lance? Going for Glacial Lance, the full commit. Will it pay off? Maybe you just uh, fake out into the Raging Bolt and just use some chip move that would threaten any of the Pokemon that could switch into the Calyrex slot to just get rid of it. I feel like that might be a solid play for Rishi. We're going to see if that's going to be what he went with here. There's Collision Course going to take yeah. out wow. Calyrex. Interesting. Not onto the Raging Bolt. No, not on the it's Raging probably Bolt. probably going to get faked out. The no, most... if it was going to be faked out, it would have been faked out already. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah it looks like you're going to go for the Grassy Glide. The just going to hit else. it. With a what? The wood, wood hammer. hammer. I don't know if this gets the knockout. It's gonna be good damage. I mean, good damage. No, not, no, not even, even close. Really. But that means it's not gonna take that much damage. In fact, it's probably gonna heal up off of the self damage it just did. And the Volt Switch also not gonna be that effective here. So gonna... now we're gonna see that last Pokemon for sure now. So we know it. It is a Moongus. You get the Incineroar Switch to at least reduce the attack from both these Pokemon. Both of them are physical attackers. Right up, just holding the clear amulet, so it won't oh, get true. reduced. Yes, but. With just an Incineroar and an Amoongus coming out, I guess your play is to just really hope you can try to get a Spore off on one of these Pokemon. But, uh, well, in fact, you'd only be able to get it on Coridon because Rillaboom's a Grass-type, so just hope you can get the Spore off onto the Coridon. And the way I'm seeing things, I don't really see a way for Rishi to avoid that unless he just goes for a Protect play, but then you're not knocking out the Amoongus. It can just sit there and keep pressing Spore. Yeah. There's, there's not a lot of pressure. There's U-turn from Rillaboom into Amoongus. That is an option. But this Fake Out and this Spore is a very deadly combo. You'll have to fully commit to Protect. Not going to do it. We are going to see Coridon take a little snooze. It's wow. the Amoongus on three! Unbelievable. Folks, you cannot make this up. Wow, it looks like Emma Brooks just has the blessings right now. All the luck is going their way. Maybe it's not even luck. Maybe it's just the EV spread of Who knows? to be tanky. The all-powerful deity deities have come down. Lord Arceus from above has decided your Pokemon shall not die on this day. And you know what? Actually, I feel like this might actually be kind of better for Rishi. Now that this thing's asleep, there's still the chance that it could wake up and this baits out basically Emma doing anything but sporing that slot again. Like, you might want to Pollen Puff into your Incineroar, for example, or do anything, but now this Rillaboom's or this uh, Coridon's asleep, you're not just going to keep pressing sporing it. So you hope for the first turn to wake up and try to get something off. Yeah, it is guaranteed one turn of sleep, so it could wake up next turn or the turn after at this point. There is a chance for three full turns of sleep. It is, if it is three turns, that is deadly and probably a game ender. Has a, oh, and he, yeah. he using the Protosynthesis on that Raging Bolt, guaranteeing the speed boost. The Wood Hammer going in, but once again, not doing any damage at all. No. So yeah, I got, got a special attack boost there, so we'll go up by 33%. On There's the, the Paul Puff doing a ton to Rillaboom. 
at least the term ton here being pretty relative. And now this is where you're comfortable just smashing Spore to make sure that if it does wake up, it's going to go right back to sleep. But it will be able to get something off before it goes back to sleep, I believe, since Amoonga is probably the slowest Pokemon on the field here. But now Crown's going to stay asleep for at least two turns. It could sleep for one more possible turn, but it's not going to enjoy taking this Draco Meteor to the face. Not at all. No, op no opportunity to switch. That's going to be your right on gone, and that's going to be your game going to Emma for game one. Yeah, Game's not over it. yet, but I think it's pretty much as good as done. Yeah, the spore. Well, you can't spore the Rillaboom. Can't spore the Rillaboom, but you can Pollen Puff, and, pollen puff and you can Thunderbolt. It's a lot of not very effective. No spread moves move. Use. Yeah. yeah. Fed rock slide. There's always the chink to gamble on the rock slide, but right now there's no flinch, nothing to stop this from yeah, happening. Battle is canceled. Emma takes round one. Very what an incredible set of plays for Emma there. Yeah, what a brilliant round one from Emma, just getting those small survivability chances. And you got to think, maybe this is all calculated. Maybe this is put down on paper, got the right EV spread to live that exact move, get down to three HP because. At this point, it has to be. It's way too consistent from what we've seen today. Yeah, I mean, I think people have run these calcs. They know the foul play Gothitelle, or Goth, yeah, Gothitelle is a total option. So they are calcing, how much do I need to be at to live a plus two foul play? But there's also so many different calibers as we've seen in that exact situation where it does end up surviving with one or three HP. So... Again, who knows? I'm not out there. I'm not in the fields. I'm not in the trenches doing the calculations myself. I'm just here spectating. And when I see this happen so, so, so many times, one can only wonder what's exactly causing that. But now, as we're heading into game two, I feel like both of these players were able to really observe each other's play styles, their habits, the way they want to try to get their game plan going. Like I said, I felt like that opening from Emma was really good, for especially for game one, for scouting your opponent and get information while still being able Able to pivot into more um, offensive strategies. Um, but now, if you're going into game two, we might see a different type of lead. Let's see what they're going to be going for in this game two for the grand finals of the final day of the mid season showdown here at St. Clair College. Ooh. Uh, Ting Lu is going to be the lead. Ting Lu, that is a very interesting lead into the Raging Bolt. That's Cinderor. a very good lead. Rishi actually probably leading a, making a lot better of a lead here. And I'm trying, I want to know who's faster, and I do not know right off the bat. I know Ting Lu is not the fastest Pokemon in the world. I would definitely say that, yeah, Rage is probably the fastest here, but when it comes to the Incineroar, Gothitelle, and Ting Lu, I feel like Ting Lu's probably slower than uh, Fake out into both. Ting Lu, do not hate that option, and the crit, because why nice. not? Gothitelle with the taunt onto the Incineroar, what a great actual, what a great mm, move yeah. there. Not going to be able to get the parting shot off at least. It's going to have to leave the normal way or with the... Yeah, it's going to have to leave the normal way if it wants to get out of here. But do you actually just let your Incineroar stay here and just keep swinging? Um, that's that's always an option too. This Pokemon is no slouch when it comes to offensive play. People will use it defensively and supportingly, but it can still get some work done. But we're going to see the Ice Rider making its way onto the field here. And now things are about to get serious. Yeah, I think we are just going to see that Terra hit right off the bat and go knock off into Gothitelle here. Or the Will... Can't use will o because Ooh. of the taunt, so it really is just locked in a knockoff. But I don't think a Gothitelle wants to eat a knockoff. Oh, we might have to see the Protect forced out here. Or unless it goes for a taunt on the Calyrex and takes the knockoff. Yeah, we'll see what happens. That might be a pretty valuable play. Um, you're basically removing your opponent, one of your opponent's win conditions um, for at least three turns, but we're going to see the Terra come out onto the Calyrex get it into a water typing uh, and that glacial lance without the stab probably oh it is actually no, no. keep forgetting assault vest special defense and glacial lance physical attack so Ting Lu is still, still pretty weak it, it still has decent defense but yeah it it's gonna tear a poison here okay. it would have been weak to glacial lance if it did not tear so it's got a tear here to try and avoid it glacial lance is still gonna hurt real bad I have a feeling we might see a fissure come through I, I, I think would, that is I the win condition. If Fissure lands, that would be the biggest pop-off I will have had all weekend. But There's you, the knockoff. Gets yeah. the kill. But you got the taunt off, and that's very important. Now you don't have to worry about this Glacial Lance coming out every turn. But with 
honest, I feel like this is a very good position to be in if you're Rishi with your uh, with your tank. I wouldn't say great position. Yeah, you're down a Pokemon and a half. Stop it, Tantrum. Tantrum are coming out right away. Onto the Incineroar. Again, trying to focus oh. on Incineroar, but Incineroar lives. I'm shocked that you would focus on Incineroar rather than the full health Calyrex that is destroying the rest of your team currently. You're if we went for the Fissure, I think that might have been, even if it doesn't land on the... Uh, you double Calyrex, your attack you double for next, the next turn. turn. I don't yeah. think you can risk a Fissure at this point. Again, you have to win this game. <laughs> I think you need to play for some risks at this point. Yeah. You're down. You're down on Pokemon. You already did a risky move with that Gothitelle taunt. I think you need to go big or go home here. Especially with that taunt, you're basically calling out that you might be stalling a turn. So if you're hoping that you're stalling a turn, then you get one free turn yourself. Oh. You do the Fissure to get the setup for the Stomping Tantrum. The Rotom is out, though. Mm -hmm. I yeah, think. but Electric. I don't think Rotom one-shots. Does Probably not, not one shot, but, but maybe with the stomping tantrum, it'll be able to take it down. Yeah, this is now you don't want to be doing fissure. <laughs> yeah, now is not the time to fissure. But we're gonna have, have to see, see what we go for here. Um, what's, what's scared to know here? This incineral oh, drawing team Lou. Okay. Is like Crydon coming out? Crydon. Oh no, Crydon's gonna eat a full. I think Crydon goes down here. Potentially, but you're playing the long game here. If you're Rishi, you want to just get this your team in a position to just wipe the rest. There's knockoff. Knock there goes the clear amulet. Coridon is susceptible to intimidates to those parting shots. There's the thunderbolt. I don't think it gets the knock. Go I don't think it gets crit. the kill. It does not. Just sure. under half. And here's the glacial lance and down goes Coridon. That's going to be pretty huge. And Coridon, unlike uh, Ice Rider, is not going to be living off of those like very small HP margins. This one's basically a guaranteed knockout. So Killing Nay is going to get plus one, and you're going to be sending your Tinglu back in. But at least you still have your Rotom threatening with that electric um, Thunderbolt. And there's no, yeah, there is no uh, Trick Room up right now. So I think you can just. Oh, Calyrex can't protect after the taunt. Can't protect, but Calyrex can switch oh, out okay. into a Moongus here. Moongus will eat a, an attack of any kind. So now you could just play for the Fissure maybe into the slot and just hope you get something. And if you don't, you have your Stomping Tension for the next turn. Exactly. Yeah, I think the only option here is Fissure. Emma's in a great position. Fissuring the Amoongus here would be great, uh, and it would be retribution for all of the bad luck so far. So knock, knock off. off. Does remove that Assault Vest, Ooh. making it weak to those Thunderbolts. There's the Thunderbolt from Amoongus doing pretty much nothing. And there's the Fissure, does not land it. Oh, oh man, but the Stomping Tantrum now gonna be a little bit stronger, but will it be strong enough to take out the Amoongus? I don't think it will be enough to take out the Amoongus. Especially with that redirection from the Rage Powder. But it's, Rotom in Sun now has fire as well. I think that fire is strong oh. enough to take out Incineroar. I think we're gonna see a fire and move. Yeah, yeah, no Trick Room up. So at the very least, Rotom will be able to act first. If you do go for the Overheat, um, that could just knock out the Amoongus. But yeah, no, it's not heat. Does it have Heat Leaf? I don't no. know. I can't see no, the shield. Got, you don't go for the spread. No, and, it's got uh, overheat. Parting shot oh. onto the Rotom as well. With with uh, Vessels of Ruin also reducing a special attack. Yeah, it's this really not going to do a lot here. Yeah. I think we will see... We see Calyrex take the field again. All Interesting. All Pokemon too on the side of Emma. It's looking very good for Emma right now as the Calyrex makes its way back into the field. Can you make something work here? If you're Ishii, just hope for the crit. Of course, you're not going to find that one. Fisher <gasps> is going to... Wow! Fisher is able to take out the Amoongus. The double bet on Fisher. I think that was the only option he had. Yeah. But you're still kind of shaky right now with the Incineroar coming back in, with the Intimidate. This is not going to be the most relevant point here, but I believe it's still going to be able to threaten Fake Out now. Yeah, uh, it's got Fake Out. It's got... I mean, if you fake out, yeah, you fake out into the Rotom. High horsepower to take out the Ting Lu. Yeah, this is looking bad for Rishi. There's no way this Ting Lu is going to get a move off. No protect on Ting Lu. No, Ting Lu is full attack. There's the fake out into the Rotom. That's looking to be game. There's the high horsepower. It is just Rotom left. It is a 3v1. Yeah, that's it. Can Rotom find any wins here? But I think Emma's taken off their headphones. Emma knows they've got this in the bag. I can hear the people clapping outside. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner for day four is Emma Brooks.
an incredible match all around. So many different strategies at play, different ways you can try to go for things. And at the end of the day, you reach for the sky, sometimes you'll be able to grab a nice juicy prize right from it. Emma Brooks taking this game in a remarkable fashion. We even get to see the fissure, but still with the way that game was going for Rishi, there was not a lot to recover from. Yeah, that was such a great game by Emma, really taking taking the charge for Windsor and leading Windsor to finally win one of our one of our mid-season challenges and taking the force of Calyrex Ice Rider. I think Karano put up a great match, but just some rough switches in there for Rishi just let Calyrex or let Karano be in some really bad positions. Yeah, it was an amazing match from both sides. Such high-level plays all around, and it's nice to have someone on the final day from Windsor finally take the win. But overall, that is going to be it. We're going to start to wrap things up here. So big congratulations to all the winners. It's going to be Steven Stark winning day one. Day two is going to be Kazuki Konohiro winning that day two. And then day three is going to be Rowan Hall. And of course, you just saw Emma win day four. Yeah, yeah, especially big shout outs to Kazuki Kanahira for coming out and commentating yesterday as well, imparting a lot of his wisdom for us. You, you know, you and me. I know, I, we know, team. we built the theme, yeah. <laughs> you know, so know. huge <laughs> shout outs. But of course, again, much love to all of the competitors, much love to all of the winners, much love to all the participants, and much love to the Pokemon community as well as everybody who helped make this event possible. For yeah. Sure. Big thank you to Ben, John, TK, Nate for choosing the St. Clair College Esports ne Nexus as your venue for this event. We couldn't have done it without you. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, this is not going to be the end of Pokemon events just here at St. Clair. We are just getting started on this train of making St. Clair and Windsor the hub of, of VGC here in Canada. I hope so. I so really hope so. Yeah, so make sure you're keeping an eye on social medias for any of our future events. And we hope to see you out here. We know we had a lot of people in chat over these last few days who are really excited about Pokemon scene some great numbers so we hope to see all of you here at st Clair for your chance to be on stream exactly for your and chance to play pokemon here if you want to know when we're doing more stuff always be sure especially with all the new faces showing up on the twitch stream be sure to drop a follow okay if you really love us you could even subscribe but if you want to know keep up to date join the st Clair saints discord as well as follow us on probably most of the active social media like twitter and other platforms TikTok. like instagram tiktok we got everything and most of the events are going to be posted there as well Exactly, but that's going to be all for tonight. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining, and thank you to our sponsors, HyperX, Subway, Tim Warren, St. Clair SRC, and uh, am I missing St. anything? St. Clair College Alumni Association. There we go. Yeah, it's been a long day. Thank you, everybody. And that is going to be all, and we'll be back very soon with more Pokemon, but you're going to have to stay updated. So have a good night, everybody. We'll see you then.